Hey guys, so today I'm going to be covering group 17 elements. So I'm going to be covering the physical properties, the chemical properties of group 17 elements, as well as its reactivity, how it varies down the group. So let's get into it. Group 17 elements are located towards the end of the right hand side of the periodic table. Group 17. Remember groups are the vertical columns, so the group number 17 is almost at the end. They are known as halogens. You know certain groups have special names such as uh, group 1 is known as the alkali metals, group 18 is the noble gases, and group 17 are known as the halogens. Uh, since they are in group 17, they have 7 valence electrons in the outermost shell. Uh, they consist of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and tennessine. As you can see in the periodic table, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and tennessine is down here. Now, tennessine is a synthetic element and it behaves differently from the rest. So, we're not going to be looking at tennessine. We're only going to be looking from fluorine until astatine. So, they all have a signature color. Fluorine is a pale yellow gas. Chlorine is a greenish yellow gas. Bromine is a reddish brown liquid. Iodine is a purplish black shiny solid. Now, you can notice another trend. As we're going down the group, this is arranged going down the group. As we're going down the group, the physical state is changing as well. We are becoming from gas, we are becoming solid. Gas into liquid into solid. So first, they are called diatomic molecules because they exist as two atoms. A molecule containing two atoms. Di here is a prefix for two. Diatomic means two atoms. So what it means is, if you look at this, this is one molecule of fluorine. One molecule of fluorine is made up of two fluorine atoms that are bonded together covalently. One molecule of bromine exists as two atoms of bromine bonded covalently. Now this is in significant contrast with your group 18 elements, with the noble gases. If you haven't watched noble gases, the link is up in the corner. Now, for noble gases, they exist as monoatomic atoms, which means that they exist as single atoms. Whereas, in contrast, for group 17 elements, they exist as diatomic molecules, two atoms. Iodine has a very low solubility. The solubility actually goes down the group, uh, decreases as you go down the group. Then they undergo displacement reactions. Now, this is especially important for IGCSE students. We will study displacement reactions later. Now, I've included a dot and cross diagram here for how the group 17 elements, for all the group 17 elements. If you haven't learned about covalent bonding and dot and cross uh, diagrams yet, don't worry. You will be learning it soon. Okay. Now, as usual, all the properties rely on atomic radius. So it's very important that we look at the atomic radius trend. As with all other groups, as we go down the group, as we go down the group, the number, the period number increases and therefore the number of shells will increase too. And so the atom is going to become bigger and bigger as we go down the group. So from fluorine to chlorine, fluorine has two shells, chlorine has three shells, bromine has four shells. So you can see the radius, the atomic radius, the size of the atom is coming, becoming bigger and bigger. So how does this affect the physical properties of group 17 elements then? Now, first we look at the, low, the melting points and the boiling points. Now, generally, they have low melting points and boiling points, but this increases down the group, as we saw just now. Chlorine and fluorine are gases, bromine is a liquid, and astatine is a solid. So the melting point is actually increasing down the group. Now, similar to group 18, group 18 elements, they are held together, group 17 elements are held together by weak van der Waal forces of attraction. That results in the low melting point and boiling point, relatively low. And as the atomic size increases, just as with group 18 elements, the van der Waal forces of attraction will increase. Now, when the forces of attraction that are holding the molecules together increases, it needs more energy to break apart. We need to insert more energy. We need to put in more energy in order to break this bond when the bond is stronger. So the stronger the bond, the more the energy needed to break the bond and therefore the higher the melting point and the boiling point. So as we go down the group, the melting point and boiling point increases. Now, density also increases down the group. This is pretty standard all across. Okay? When the relative atomic mass increases, the density increases. 
generally they are insoluble in water of course chlorine and uh, chlorine and bromine are actually a bit soluble uh, iodine is very slightly soluble almost insoluble okay this since they are non metals they do not conduct electricity and heat this is a property of all non metals now group 17 elements reactivity so how does the reactivity vary down the group again reactivity here means its ability to react with other elements so halogen are electronegative now when i was covering uh, group 1 elements again the link is in the corner of the video now group 1 elements are electropositive now, what does electropositive mean electropositive is the tendency of donating electrons i i i'll tell you how to remember again electropositive is the ability to become positive and how does an element become positive an element becomes positive by donating electrons that's the only way okay because we cannot be moving around protons protons don't move around in any reaction electrons are the one that are moving around so electronegativity is just the opposite electronegativity is the tendency to gain electrons because think about it like this electronegativity is the ability to become the ability to become negative so how to become negative by the only way is by gaining electrons okay so group 17 elements are actually the most electronegative elements they have a high tendency to accept electrons and when they accept electrons of course they become negative ions so this is how you write it you write the halogen remember they exist as diatomic molecules so whenever you write the group 17 elements in the elemental state we cannot write it as a single atom it must always exist as a diatomic molecule so halogen plus two electrons and the ions are called halide ions so for example fluorine accepts two electrons to form two fluoride ions chlorine molecule accepts two electrons to form two chloride ions so now how does this vary down the group we're going to look at that now huh? so going from top to bottom in the group that means from fluorine to astatine as we go down the group the atoms are becoming bigger as we've already seen from the atomic radius all right because the number of shells keep increasing and so the atom is going to become bigger and bigger and bigger so as the nucleus gets further from the outer shell now remember all movement of electron gaining of electrons or loss of electrons all happens at the outer shell the outermost layer and the force that is holding all the electrons in place is the electrostatic force between the positive nucleus the protons in the nucleus and the negative electrons okay so the nucleus the positive nucleus is having an attraction towards the outermost electron and this is what is keeping it there so as the outermost electron moves further and further and further it's moving further and further and further away again i will use the same uh, example magnets right you put magnets very close together the attraction is very strong but as you move the magnets further and further away the attraction becomes weaker and weaker so in this case when the electron goes further and further and further away the forces of attraction between the electron and the nucleus becomes weaker the proton in the nucleus are going to attract the electron into the outermost shell so the further it is from the nucleus the harder it is to attract the electrons okay imagine this is a group 17 nucleus and there's an electron here now it is in close proximity with the nucleus so it's easy to gain an electron however if the outermost shell is somewhere around here it's much further away from the positive nucleus and it's harder to gain an electron into this shell right so that's what's going on here so the larger the non metal actually the harder it is to gain an electron and the harder it is to react and therefore the harder it is to react with other elements to form compounds now as i've already mentioned before all chemical reactions involve transfer of electrons gaining electrons losing electrons or sharing electrons it's all about the electron movement so when you want when group 17 elements react they gain electrons generally right they gain electrons so if it is harder to gain electrons it's going to be harder to react so as we go down the group the electronegativity the ability to accept electrons 
will become lower as we go down the group. I want to go through this one more time because it's very important. As we go down the group, the shell becomes more, number of shell becomes more, the atom size becomes bigger and bigger, the valence shell, the outermost shell becomes further and further away from the positive nucleus and so it becomes harder and harder to gain electrons and therefore the ability to gain electrons, the electronegativity will decrease as we go down the group. So this is an example, the positive nucleus, distance from the positive nucleus and the outermost electron. You can see here, okay, this is the distance with the outermost shell. So it's going to become harder to gain electrons. For the chemical properties of group 17 elements, we can remember it as having three basic reactions. The first of it is with metals. Now we've already seen this with group 1 elements, that group 1 elements react with group 17 elements. So of course group 17 elements react with group 1 elements in the same manner. So for example, sodium reacts with chlorine to form sodium chloride. So this is a metal halide. So if it is bromine, then we have bromide salts. If we have chlorine, then we have chloride salts. Okay, sodium uh, chloride. So if it's fluorine, we will have fluoride salts and so on. So all metals, they react with all metals as well, not only with group 1 metals. So the reaction that you would have to remember here is the reaction with iron specifically. So it reacts very easily with iron. This is the setup. Okay, this is a combustion tube. Now, how we do it is we react it with some iron wool. The uh, group 17 elements are made into gas, vapor, and then they are heated up with the iron wool. This is the general method of reaction. And this is the product. So we have iron plus the halogen, plus the group 17 element, and then we get iron halide. So if it's chlorine, then we get iron chloride. If it is bromine, we get iron bromide, iodine, iron 3, iodide. Second reaction is reaction with water. Now, I've arranged it such that the first reaction, if you notice, only has one product. So when they react with metals, group 17 elements react with metals, you get one product, which is the metal halide. Now, for reaction with water, there are two products, and both are acids. Okay? Group 17 elements react with water to form an acidic solution. And this acidic solution behaves as bleach, except for with iodine. Okay, so everything else will act as a bleach. So for example, chlorine and water. Now chlorine and water, first we get hydrochloric acid, and then we get hypochlorous 1 acid. So both are acids. Okay, so chlorine, water, hydrochloric acid. HCl is hydrochloric acid. H OCl is hypochlorous 1 acid. The chloride ion, the one at the back, is sometimes written as ClO. This is OCl, sometimes it's written as ClO. And its charge, the charge of the chloride 1 ion is neg minus, 1 minus. Right? So chlorine solution, once the chlorine dissolves in water, it will form a pale green or yellow, or greenish yellow, pale green, pale yellow solution. Okay, when bromine reacts with water, we got hydrobromic acid and hydrobromous 1 acid. Now again, HBr is hydrobromic acid and then we have HOBr or sometimes written as HBrO. This is hypobromous 1 acid and it will form an orange solution. For iodine, iodine dissolves in water, reacts with water, okay, but very slightly, and it forms hydroiodic acid and hypoiodous 1 acid. So HI for hydroiodic acid and HOI or HIO for hypoiodous 1 acid. And this will form a yellow or brown solution. Iodine forms a yellow or brown solution in water. So the one that behaves as, an, as a bleach is actually this. The hypoiodous, hypobromous, and hypochlorous acids. These are the ones that act as a bleach. So this is how it would look like. If this was the reaction, halogen and water. So first, it forms an acid. So blue litmus paper will turn red first and then it will ble become bleached. Bleach means becomes decolorized, becomes white. Okay. Now the third reaction forms three products. That is the reaction with alkali. Group 17 elements react with alkalis. They react easily to form 
hair lights, hair lights, and water. Okay, let's take a look at what all these are. So sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide is the alkali here. It can be potassium hydroxide, okay? Reacts with chlorine to form sodium chlorate one. So this is the chlorate, same chlorate ion in the hydro hypochlorous acid. This one, hypochlorous one acid, it's the same ion. Okay, so here it is not an acid, here it is a salt. So sodium chlorate one. N-A-O-C-L or it can be written as N-A-C-L-O and then we have sodium chloride halide this is a salt sodium chloride and water H2O so reaction with alkali we have three products halate like this sodium chloride one halides sodium chloride and water three products so let's look at the reaction with bromine so sodium hydroxide will react with bromine to form sodium bromate 1, this is the halate, and then sodium bromide, which is the halide, and water. And of course we have iodine, sodium hydroxide reacts with iodine to form sodium iodate 1, sodium iodide, and water. It's the same pattern. Okay. So the reaction of group 17 elements are, same, are the same for chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay, fluorine acts a bit differently. It is extremely electronegative and so its behavior is different. It's different from the rest of the group 17 elements. So when you write examples of group 17 elements and we are talking about the chemical properties, we are talking about these specific reactions, do not write fluorine. Okay, do not write fluorine and do not write astatine. You can write chlorine, bromine and iodine. Okay, so this is for, especially for IG students. Group 17 elements are also known as group 7, Roman numeral 7. So group 7 elements here, they also undergo displacement reaction. Now a more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive halogen from a salt solution. So remember the pattern of reactivity here. The reactivity will decrease down the group. This is opposite to group 1 elements. Group 1 elements, they lose electrons so as they become bigger it's easier to donate electrons because the valence electron is further from the nucleus but for group 17 elements it's the opposite as the atom becomes bigger and bigger it is harder to gain electrons because the outermost shell has become much further from the nucleus where the protons are that would attract the electrons Okay, so electronegativity uh, electro will decrease down the group, which means the reactivity will also decrease down the group. So here, for example, chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Fluorine is, of course, the most reactive here. Bromine is more reactive than iodine. Okay, so what does displacement mean? So look at this example of this reaction. So we have a sodium bromide solution here. Okay, sodium bromide solution. When we add chlorine, now chlorine is more electronegative than bromine. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine. So what chlorine does, it bumps out the bromide ions. It takes its place, it displaces it. Okay, so chlorine will displace the bromide ions here and the bromide ions will become bromine. Okay, the bromine is actually an aqueous solution. So once again, chlorine has displaced the bromide ion from sodium bromide to become bromine in an aqueous solution. So bromine solution is an orange color. So the original color of the solution was colorless because it's sodium bromide. A salt solution, sodium salt solution is colorless. Now after it has been displaced, bromine comes out. Bromine solution, as we already know, is orange in color. So another uh, uh, another example will be chlorine reaction with sodium iodide. So again, chlorine is more reactive than iodine. So chlorine is going to displace the iodine from the sodium iodide solution. So chlorine displaces iodine, it takes its place, it kicks it out and takes its place. So it becomes sodium chloride, from sodium iodide it becomes sodium chloride and we have iodine in solution. Now let's look at the color of group 17 elements in water as well as in organic solvents such as 
uh, here we are looking at 111 trichloromethane. So 111 trichloromethane is the bottom layer, water is, water is the top layer. So the color of group 7 or group 17 elements in water, the top layer, chlorine will be a greenish yellow solution, bromine and iodine both form brown solutions. Whereas in 111 trichloromethane, their colors are slightly different. Chlorine is colorless, it's very very pale that it appears colorless. Bromine is a brown color and iodine is a purple color. Now I just want you to notice that the color of bromine in water as well as 111 trichloromethane are the same. They are both brown color. Alright guys, so that's it for group 17 elements. Please also take a look at group 1 and group 18 elements and compare. And that is all for this video. I hope you've learned something today. And if you have, please hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next video.